In most of our videos, we're wanting to show off a new feature of Odin or explain how his system works. In this video, we're going to do things a bit differently. We want to show you real examples from my personal project of simple uses of Odin that save me time as I work on my project. Some of the examples may apply directly to your project, others may not, but what we really hope is that they inspire you to find new ways to use Odin that will speed up your development. Most games have multiple scenes in the project. You may work in one or two scenes most of the time, but when you do need to switch scenes, it can take a handful of clicks and often some typing in a search bar to find the scene. So why not speed that up with some buttons and a custom editor? With Odin, these are created much the same way as a custom inspector with just a few minimal changes. Notably, we need to include serenix.odininspector.editor namespace, as well as inherit from Odin editor window. We also need a way to open our editor window, and we can do this with the open window function and the menu item attribute so we can open our window from the Unity menus. From there, we create functions just like normal and add the button or button group attribute. In my case, I've created three buttons for three commonly used scenes. You might see that there's a fourth button there, and this will select my patch notes, which is a scriptable object. This just makes it easy to find and update the patch notes without having to dig through the project folder or type into a search bar. Speaking of those patch notes, that's another place that I found helpful to leverage Odin. Rather than use Unity's scriptable object, I've used Odin's serialized scriptable object, which can serialize a dictionary. I use the version number as the key, and the patch notes themselves are stored as the value in the dictionary. This by itself could be helpful, but we can go further and make it easier to use. Do note that I've created a custom container that stores the notes and the version number. It's not needed, but I found it keeps things a bit easier to use. But the real magic comes in the inspector. By using the onValueChanged attribute in the version field, all I need to do is type a version number, and the notes are loaded from the dictionary if the version can be found. To add a new version notes, I simply type the version number and add the notes. Once again, the onValueChanged attribute will save the notes as I type. The Add Notes button on the bottom really isn't needed and is just stuck around from earlier versions of the tool. The button calls the same function as the onValueChanged attribute. Notice also that the entire dictionary is available at the top of the inspector, just in case that's useful. And if you're wondering about the other button, the Reset Red button, I track whether users have seen or read a particular version of the patch notes. Nobody needs to be prompted to read the same patch notes every time they play. And the button is just for internal testing of the system. It lets me reset my local state and make sure the system is working correctly. One of the things that I like to do the least in Unity is drag and drop prefabs into an inspector, especially if it's lists. It's super easy to forget to add a prefab or maybe add a duplicate. So instead, what I started doing is add buttons that will get all the prefabs from a particular location and then populate my list. These buttons call a helper function that takes in a path and then sets the value of the list with all the prefabs that were found in a given location. If I keep my project folders organized, it's easy to make sure that I have all the prefabs that I want and I haven't duplicated any entries. Pretty simple, but I found it pretty useful. A lot of games have some sort of day-night cycle, and it's not uncommon for aspects of the gameplay to depend on the time of day. This can slow down testing for any number of reasons, the simplest being just waiting for the time to change. And my project isn't any different. Rather than wait for the entire day or night to pass, I added simple buttons that set all the needed values so I can have a quick or a normal day. It's nothing too fancy, but it saved me far more time than it took to put together. I use a lot of scriptable objects in my projects, some of them need to have particular settings, and I find those settings really easy to forget a few months down the road. For example, I have a stat scriptable object, and an instance of the scriptable object is used by every player object, as well as every enemy object. So if stats like hit points haven't been set, it's a problem. Writing a simple validator using Odin Validator is a quick and easy way to ensure that scriptable objects get set correctly. If you haven't created a validator, it's remarkably fast and easy, and we have a bunch of videos showing exactly how to create your own validators. I gotta say, it's much nicer to catch an error when creating a scriptable object rather than later during the gameplay when something in the game tries to make use of that scriptable object and gets an unexpected value. I've also added some fixes that needed to be implemented when some functionality changed mid-development. Using these fixes was quicker and easier than manually adjusting each scriptable object. All of my player objects need to have several components to detect enemies. Since they're all set up the same, why not create a validator to make sure they're done correctly? That enemy detection makes use of layers, which can be a great way to optimize as well as control object interactions. And Odin can easily check for correct layers or missing components, so why not make use of that functionality? I wrote this particular and simple validator 
after wasting 30 minutes trying to figure out why my new player unit wasn't working. I just forgot to set the layer. In my project, I use scriptable objects for each upgrade for player units. So there's a decent number of scriptable objects, which can be a pain to create or manage. So I created an editor window to make the work easier. In that editor window, I've got a path to store any newly created scriptable object. Below that, Odin does its magic and draws the inspector for the selected scriptable object. Further down, I have three buttons that let me save, create a new instance, and for further ease, auto-generate a name for the upgrade based on the data in the fields. Because I love scriptable objects and creating custom editors is easy, I created another editor for my resource scriptable object. In this particular case, the resource type is defined by the values of an enum. Each value needs an instance of a scriptable object. So this editor gets a dropdown for the enum, and when that dropdown value changes, the corresponding scriptable object data is shown in the editor. If there isn't a scriptable object for a particular enum value, an instance of the scriptable object is created and saved at the path location. Going one step further, I added a button on the bottom to create any missing scriptable objects to make sure that I have a scriptable object for every value of the enum. Is any of what we've shown here needed? No, frankly it's not, but each tool has saved me time, whether it's automating simple things like loading scenes, reminding me how to set up a prefab, or simplifying the creation and editing of a scriptable object makes my development quicker and easier, which is something we all need. If you want to see the code from the example shown, We'll have a GitHub link in the description, but fair warning, there are a lot of custom classes, so the code will not run in your projects. We're sharing it as an example that you can hopefully learn from, as well as adapt to your own project. So I hope that was interesting, better yet useful for you and your project, and until next time, happy game designing.